Okay, graphing exponential functions. This is the general form with a number raised to the x power. And then based on what's added to it, changes how the graph will look. So if you have a plus or minus a number, then it'll go up and down. If you have plus or minus a exponent, it'll go to the right or left. Um, if this coefficient is negative, it's gonna be reflected down instead of going up. And then as far as growth and decay, um, if B, if this coefficient is greater than one, so anything bigger than one, then um, it'll go up and to the right. If it's in between zero and one, so if B is a fraction, then it'll go up and to the left, and we'll see examples of that. The graphs will look like this, either in this direction or in this direction, um, but just knowing what it's gonna look like can help us graph it when we get there. And from then on, I'm just gonna show you and then we'll come across different situations as we go into different examples. Okay, so first example looks like this. Um, this is greater than one, so it's gonna be growth. It's gonna go up and to the right. This plus two is a translation up to. And what that means is, so looking at the graph, we're gonna draw an asymptote at x equals two. So like this. And an asymptote is just a guideline. And we'll see how it plays into the whole graph in a second. Okay, so there's also these little tips right here. If this, I didn't get that. Could you if this number is greater than one, then we're gonna choose x values that are going to the right. So if x is greater than one, we're choosing values that go to the right. So from zero, we're gonna choose one, two, three. What do you mean? Like bigger, like what is the x value? Plug in zero and three other values for the x value here. So essentially the B, and I was trying not to like confuse that, but since, since B here is greater than one, then we choose values to the right for X. Okay, now that we have those plugged in, we plug them into this equation and solve for Y. So two to zero plus two would be one plus two is three. And we continue that. Now what we're going to do is graph these points on the graph. So zero, three. So here's where it's helpful to know that the graph is going to have this shape. So from here, we're just going to trace these points like this. And if you weren't sure, so let's say you forgot that the shape would be like that, you could plug in more values like 2.5 and get points over here, but we can stop there. Okay, then for domain and range, negative infinity to infinity, on the homework question, sometimes it asks you for domain and range. For negative infinity to infinity, a lot of times they'll say all real numbers. And then for range, the lowest y value will be two, and then it goes up to infinity. So y is greater than two. Okay, then the next one, 
different situation. We have a fraction right here. So that would be decay. <laughs> what does that mean? The graph is going to go up to the left, up to the left. What does that even mean? It's going to look like this, up and to the left. Um, there's no plus or minus at the end, so there's no like translation up or down. And then the asymptote is just at zero. So our guideline is at y equals zero. So when it has the plus two, we went up two. If it was minus two, we'd go down two. And then for this one, we didn't have plus or minus anything. So it's just at zero. Okay, so we need numbers here. If this is less between zero and one, if it's a fraction, then we're going to go to the left. So we're going to choose numbers that are to the left. So like negative one, negative two, negative three. Okay, then we plug them into the equation. Any number raised to zero power is just one. Then for the next one, hey, technically, if you didn't remember all the exponent rules, you could plug this into a calculator and get the answer that way. Um, the way to do it using all the exponent rules would be, this would be two to the negative one times negative one, be two to the positive one, which equals two. And repeat. Then once I have these values, we can graph them. next page. Okay, so new problem. Same idea. Um, for this one, we have a negative right here. So this would be a reflection. So it's going to be reflected down. So instead of going up into the right, it's going to go down into the right. So this is growth. And then this would be up to as far as like a translation. Yes. Uh, yeah, if it's number two, we can. Okay. Okay. How would it be gross if it's less than one? So, if you look at the rules. Growth greater z between zero and one is the decay. So, yeah. so if it was between 0 and 1, it would go to the left, but because it's greater than 1, um, and consider that negative like separate. Whoa, I didn't realize I didn't. Okay. 
So consider the negative separate. This is not a fraction. It's a whole number. So the negative will always be If it was a negative fraction, it would be decay. So like negative one half or something would be decay. And then it would go to the left. So if you look at the graph before we even draw it, it's going to the right still. If it was a fraction, it would go down into the left. Okay. okay. Then from here. Okay. So still growth. So we're going to choose values to the right. One and two. And then plugging it in. So we get negative four to the zero power plus two. And consider that negative separate. We're going to put 4 in parentheses. So 4 to the 0 would be 1. So then this would be negative 1 plus 2, which is 1. Yes. Oh. Oh, yeah. Next. Okay, so same idea here. We have the negative, which means it'll be reflect reflection, so reflected down. Um, three halves, although it is written in fraction form, this is greater than one. Um, so it's still gonna be growth. So it's still gonna go to the right. And then, yeah, okay. Doesn't it have to be a whole number? No, it has to be greater than one. So like a fraction would be like in between zero and one. And even like three halves times 1.5 because they're both greater than one, it's still, this is gonna multiply to something bigger than one. Um, and then we plug in values. So because it's to the right, we choose numbers that are to the right. The asymptote is just going to be at zero.
Yes. Then, okay, in the moment we have the values, we can graph them. Is lesson zero. Number five, last question. Um, this one doesn't have a plus or minus a big number. It has plus or minus the small number, which if you go back to the rules, that means it's translated left or right. So plus or minus the smaller number, translation right or left. So the plus two means it's going to be translated to the left two. And then start with a value that makes exponent equal to zero. So if we start with a value here that makes the exponent equal to zero, that would be negative two. But then since it's more than one, doesn't it fall in the other side of the bracket? So like if I plug in three, negative two plus two, be three to zero, which equals one. Is that what you're thinking or are you thinking of something else? confused about. Okay, so negative 2, 1, be right here, negative 1, 3, There's a graph. Or, okay. Um, so your homework is 9-5. I only made it five questions, so it should be pretty quick and to the point. Um, it's on Schoology. If you finish it, then work on EverFi. No test tomorrow, just test review. And yes, those that need to go to the bathroom, you can battle it out for the bathroom pass.